And with that, it's time to tin chat once again. A new week, same Mike Moss. I am Justin Prince. Thanks for joining us. Mike, we're back inside. That means the tin caps are on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, they just wrapped up the first half of the season yesterday. And guess what? As of right now, they're in first place. A five way, a six, uh, six, six way, way tie for six first place. place. We love to see it. Uh, but no, Tin Caps obviously finished the first half of the season yesterday. Uh, had a chance to get back to 500 for the second time this year. First time it would have been, they would have been 500. Unfortunately, lost to South Bend last night, five to one. But they finished the first half, 32 and 34. And I think you'd tell me that on May 1, and I probably would have looked at you and laughed, but they've had a, a heck of a last couple of months and got some good momentum here moving into this second half of this season. Uh, obviously, you know, like I said, finishing 32 and 34, and, and they've now won two of three against South Bend, and they took three out of the six last week against Lansing. On May 1st, they were 5 and 16. On May 10th, uh, I'm sorry, on May um, 13th, they were 10 and 22. And heading into tonight's game, the first game of the second half, 32 and 34. Big improvement. Yeah. And this is a team that I don't think anyone in the Midwest League really wants to play right now. Because everything that a team strives for, the pitching, the hitting, the defense, the little things, you know, running out ground balls or taking advantage of opponents' mistakes. This tin cap team is doing that right now. Yeah, they lost last night, but look at the first two games of this series with South Bend. Yeah. Eight to one, seven to one. You had it all. A couple of key home runs in each game. Solid pitching, especially from the starters. Yeah. And uh, even the bullpen is getting better. Um, you still have your bumps in the road, but this team is playing quote unquote winning baseball. Yeah. By definition, over 500, better than 500, winning more than you're losing. And it's been that way in essence since the 1st of May. Mike, this team, outside of obviously what uh, Great Lakes has done because they've been phenomenal, they're plus 113 in run differential. The Tin Caps are second in the Midwest League in run differential right now at a plus 20 clip, despite being in, in fourth place after the first half of the season. And think about it, fourth place is the highest they have yeah. been in the first half. Uh, and, and it wasn't until... Uh, and they're only a game... It they wasn't were, until yeah. June 9th yeah. that they got above sixth place in the league. And, they're only, and they only finished a game out of second place yeah. uh, just with uh, the last couple months that they've had. You start weighing, obviously, the minuses at the start of the year. The bullpen was a shipwreck. I'll get in trouble for saying it, but that's the term I'm going to use. Could not hold leads. The offense at times went into the witness protection program. Couldn't buy a hit on eBay or, or <laughs> uh, any place else. But then again, once the calendar turned to May, and Jonathan Matthews has said this time and time again as well, when the weather got warmer, the team got better. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, one of those guys, Mike, we, we've talked about uh, a different guy, it seems like, every single week here on the show. Uh, one of those guys who's kind of flown under, under the radar in, in terms of, I think, what we like to talk about, what a lot of people like to talk about has been Brandon Valenzuela. He's obviously been in a, a tough position, what seemed like, all season long. Obviously, the Tin Caps have carried three catchers all year. Uh, Brandon wasn't getting necessarily the starts, but he's played in 37 games so far this year. He's hitting 294. And last year, Mike, he only hit 209 and, yeah. and right now he's second on the team in batting average yeah he's got you know 15 20 ish less games than a lot of guys but they're trying to spread out some of those games among their three catchers but still hitting 294 and looking like a much improved player uh you know from last season like we've said about a bunch of these guys that are back you mentioned 37 games uh, 37 hits and 126 at bats nine doubles one triple four home runs 15 runs batted in He's walked 16 times. Yeah. He's a switch hitter. Um, he's got a 476 slugging percentage and an OPS of 862. And that 862 is tops on the ball club. And not to mention the fact that he's a switch hitter, which isn't easy. Uh, the art of switch hitting is, is almost dinosauric right now. And he's a switch hitter. Well, last year when we saw him, we thought the bulk of his power came from the left side. 
he's improved as a right-hand hitter in terms yeah. of power. And uh, he's come up with a lot of key hits in key situations. And he's managed that pitching staff really, 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 really well. And on top of that, has managed the base runners very well yeah. from, from behind the plate. And, and really just looking like a completely different catcher offensively, defensively, and otherwise uh, from last year to this season. You know, we've been hinting around this as the season has progressed. And, you know, the $64,000 question is not if yeah. San Diego is going to start making some moves, but when they're going to make moves. And it's all uh, tantamount on injury situations, yeah. on performance, and, and so forth. I personally am selfish and biased. I'd like to see this group stay together for at least another yeah. four to six weeks to get this team off to the start they need to get yeah. if they want to make a real run for a playoff spot in the second half yeah. and then see what happens. Yeah, but uh, on top of that, obviously, uh, you know, you mentioned guys that may be going up here here very soon. You got to think that Brandon Valenzuela is one of those guys that has yeah. earned himself a call up to Double A for the first time in his career, just based on what he's done. I mean, in the month of June alone, he's hitting 333. He's got a homer and eight RBIs for the team. Just like when Jackson Merrill has been tearing the hide yeah. off the baseball at the plate, hitting well over 300 for a number of weeks now. Valenzuela has gained the experience. We mentioned he was here last year, 2022 came in in August of 2021 from Lake Elsinore. Yeah, he did. So he has seen the landscape here in Fort Wayne for well over a year and a half, two, almost two years now. And by George, he deserves the promotion. And we wish him the best win ever that may come yeah. to be. But as long as he's here, let's take advantage of oh, his talents. Absolutely. All right, Mike. Uh, obviously, after tonight, two more games over in South Bend. A little bit of a different week next week. They've got Monday, Tuesday off. Then Wednesday, they start a six-game set over in Lake County. They play their six games, and then they're back here at Parkview Field after that. Which, oh, by the way, is the 4th of July yes, when we will have the biggest crowd of the year. Uh, there will be the City of Fort Wayne fireworks that are set to start off at 10 p.m. How well we remember what happened just a few short years ago when there was still a game in progress <laughs> yes. when the fireworks were, were shot off. And that's an experience uh, I hope we never get to experience again. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is the continuation of the longest road trip of the season. Yep. The six games in South Bend, the six games next week in suburban Cleveland. And then we come home, we being the team, and we get to face West Michigan, who we haven't seen since the first three games of the season yeah. back in April. So um, the ball is rolling, so to speak. And as you said at the start of our chit-chat session, the records are all square. Everybody is 0-0 tied for first place in the second half. And uh, let's just see if the Tin Caps can get off to the good second half start and make a serious run for a second half Houston Division championship. You got that right, Mike. All right, Mike and I are going to be back same time, same place next week. Elijah and I are going to be back with more in the locker room right after this. Stick around.